Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Scott Thompson here from uh, Scott Art CNC. Uh, I'm going to take a couple minutes and I want to uh, show you how to build a model of a beer can. I know we all like beer cans, so uh, I posted one last week and it got a lot of attention and I'll probably pick one that's a little less controversial. But I want to show you how to do it. It's a real simple build in Aspire. Uh, I'm going to do two, two uh, videos for you. One's going to show you how to build it just as a standard, uh, uh, you know, flat screen 3D uh, model and then I'll do the same model over again in uh, for ro rotary so you can build the can fully in the round so uh, bear with I'm going to splice this into a video on how to build the first one and then we'll tie in another one you can uh, watch these and hopefully get to uh, build your own uh, beer cans here in a little bit so thanks for watching stop by our store at Scott Art CNC and uh, message us there happy to help you with any kind of modeling needs you have going on or questions so Thanks. model like this where you can build your uh, favorite beer can uh, quick. So I'm going to, the way I'm going to show you that as I'm showing you the finished product here, I'm going to dismantle it and pull the vectors apart. You'll see it going backwards and then I'll uh, recreate it pretty quickly here and take just a few minutes to do this. It's what I call a two-click model. So let's take a look at how the Aspire lets us do this. So let me unclick uh, the model here quick and I'll show you where we started. I started out with a picture of of a can of beer here. I have another picture down here kind of off screen that I'll show you. Uh, and what I want you to see here is the difference between the two photos. The one on the right is a pretty good photo for making a model off of. The one on the left, because it's tilted, it's hard to get the right profile, harder to get the right profile of the model because you see the top of it's got a curve in it and the same down at the bottom. So we're going to use, I'll get that out of the way, we're going to use this one and if you look careful, I have a couple of, uh, I'm going to delete that vector. And I have a vector over here. I'm not going to take the time to redraw it, but if you watch, what I did in order to create this vector is I put my beer can exactly on the center line in the screen, and I drew, I traced out half the beer can. And when you get down to the bottom down here, you can see the beer can has a curved bottom. And that's because of the way a, photo a, a picture distorts thing. It, it's taken from a single point. So it has to look at the, that curve there. So when you're creating this vector, you have to make this straight line down here to correct for that. So we end up with a vector that looks like half a beer can. So I put that, I'm going to put that vector back where it belongs. And I'm going to show you the first click to make this beer can. A lot of you have done this already. It's not a, it's not a hard trick. So we're going to go over to our modeling tool. And I'm going to come up here uh, to this uh, tool right here that says uh, create a shape by spinning or turning a vector. We want to use that. And I'm going to just hit the yes button. And uh, it says turn the vector around from a starting point in point. Yes, that's what we want to do. I'm going to hit apply. And boom, boom, and just like that, you have a half a beer can, and it's, and it's done and ready. Now you might play with the depth of it for uh, however. So I'm going to just relabel that one. I'm going to call that can, and we're going to say start a new component. I'm going to close it, and I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to click off of that can because what I want to see right now, well, let me go backwards for a sec. First off, I'm going to click on that can again. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull my... That vector I used to create it, I'm going to pull it off to the side here. I'm going to click on the can, and I'm going to go back up to my modeling tool path. And you'll understand why I'm doing this in a minute. And I'm going to ask uh, Aspire to make a vector boundary around that component. So I click on it, and you can now see I have a nice, clean vector that goes all the way around that can. And I'll show you why we use that in just a minute. So again, close out the can we made. And now I'm going to click on the actual photo here and I'm going to come up for this is the second click to make uh, this is a two click model so I'm going to come up here I'm going to click on create a component from a selected or imported bitmap I'm going to click on that and it makes this uh, model of the label just by a single click like that and uh, if you haven't used that tool before it's a pretty good tool for creating some detail and it's probably deeper than I want it right now but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use that vector again I'm going to click on the can again, which is now a model. And I'm going to come up here and use this button that says uh, track, collect this, select the component used using a vector. We're going, to, we're going to trim it. So I click on that. And it creates two separate models now. Well, one is this outer area and the other one's the actual can. So I'm going to click on this outer area, which I don't want. I hit delete. And now all we have is that 
label. And I'm going to come to that and I'm going to relabel, rename it. I'm going to call it, uh, let's just call that skin. Okay, so we now have the beer can skin. Now if I go back in and I turn my can back on, we now have essentially a beer can. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with the skin. I think it's a full tenth of an inch uh, model depth. So I'm going to come up here in this area. I'm going to go with 0 .03 on that component. Close. And you can see it looks a lot better there. So now you, from there you can, uh, I like to use... I'm going to put a new, insert a new level in there, and I like to use, for most of my model building, I like this tool that create a component from visible model. So I'm going to hit that, and it creates the component, but it leaves these components as set, separate. So if you did it by using the, the uh, bake function, you would lose those two components. So now you can see the can's way too deep, so I have to turn off that level. So now I have the component is one uh, I'll rename that Pabst can. But if you wanted to, now you have a can built, you can pull in eight or ten different labels. You can make a whole collection of beer cans to sit on top of your shelf. And uh, so that's just the quick version of, uh, and some of the tools I use. It's really a two-click thing for making a bottle I'll, for a beer can. I'll tell you, this works really cool on wine bottles, too, if you've got a favorite label somewhere and you want to put it on their shelf. So... That's about uh, where that is. So if you uh, if you get a chance, this is my uh, Etsy store, Scott Art, Art CNC. I got tons of models on there, and uh, uh, maybe uh, 150 models, and I probably have about 2,500 models. So happy to help you anytime I can on modeling and questions, and drop me a note there and say hi, and uh, look forward to uh, visiting with you. There will be another uh, tape here in a minute on how to do the uh, one in the full round on the rotary. All right, we're back. So look, I've opened up a new uh, modeling screen. This is a, uh, uh, a rotary model screen. So if I look at uh, edit job size, it opens up with a, that it's a rotary model. I set it for 2.67 inches in diameter, which is the size of a beer can, and five inches in length, which is about the size of a beer can. When you start researching this, there's quite a few different lengths and sizes in beer cans. Boy, so again, I set it up as a rotary model, and uh, that's all good. And then I imported over here, I brought in under models, I brought in that a PAP skin that we used in the last model, if you watched the first part of this video. So that is already in here and it's sitting here just doing what it does. So now I'm gonna show you pretty quick, again, one click on how to make a can in Rotary. So this is a full in the round can. So you have your two outside vectors here in blue that are already selected. I'm going to hit or I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to select those two uh, cans and what I have done is I've also imported this vector up here which is the can vector I previously used so I didn't have to retrace it so I have that I'm going to go up here and I'm going to use this uh, create a shape by sweeping between two rail vectors so we've got the two rail vectors I'll click on that it says do you like it and I go yeah I like those two and then I'm going to hold the shift down and I'm going to click on this can shape vector I'm going to hit and I've also got this set right here you can see for 1.375 which gets me the size of the can I'm going to hit apply and if I if come up to here and click on uh, toggle the wrapping in 3d view on you can now see what the can looks like so some of you right away are going to go well the, the uh, Paps Blue Ribbon doesn't go all the way around. Well, yes, I don't have a photo of the back of the can. So let's talk about, I don't have that for this lesson, and you'll have to play with that on your own for a little bit, but here's how I would deal with it. So I'm going to go back to uh, my flat view, and let's go back into modeling for a minute, and let's just look at the skin for a second. So I would take the skin like this, I'd pull it up to the top here, and I'd range it right at the top where it's going to be, and you're going to tinker with this. When you're doing rotary models, you'll find out that if you don't get these just right, it leaves little ledges and edges. And I would spread that out to cover half of the model. 
And then I'd click on it and I would just say uh, copy, paste, and this particular beer can. And you'll notice right here in the middle, I'm going to have them overlap just ever so slightly uh, like that. So I've now put two labels on these, both set up to cover half the size of the can. And uh, if you had the photo of the back of the can, this is again how you do it as well. So now if we look at how it looks as a rotary model, well, we, it doesn't look good at all unless we put the can in there. So I have to click on this to get the can back in there and click off where we're at. And now you can see how that would work. So now here's again some details. You can see up here at the top, it, the taper is uh, wrong here. It doesn't cover the entire can. So in order to fix that, it involves doing modeling work right in this area right here. And I'm not going to get into how to model that, uh, but pretty much you would cut and paste a piece of this out of the model and move it out here and then trim it straight and you would have that in there again and you'd fill in that void. So it takes, that takes a little bit of cleanup time but for most of us if we want a round beer can uh, this is a pretty good representation. And you'd have to do the same thing on the bottom. So that's the basics of uh, being able to make a wooden beer can uh, and uh, get these labels on it. And, have fun with it. Make a stack of beer cans that your friends can't drink, and it'd be a pretty cool-looking collection. So that's all I got on it, and uh, thanks for looking.